We were yeah. very lucky. Um, when we were thinking of coming here, I said there won't be any trouble in casting this and because I knew how good Ozzy and Kiwi actors were. I thought of this poor man just trying to kick his leg up so his toe would almost He's touch his very, nose. He's a very, very good actor. He'd have to be that very limber, too. Yeah, but, it, that, but that's the easy bit. There's a number of people who can do that, but he's a very good actor. Mm. And when I watched him on the opening night on Saturday, I just watched him and I thought, I can't believe how good he is. I cannot believe it. Can he keep it up? And he did. Yeah. But that was true of all the stuff. I mean, I'm very proud of that cast. And they're lovely people. They all like each other and they get on well. And if, you, if I give them a little tips, I can give them a little help with some of the comedy stuff. I'll just what, say what something terribly think? simple. I'll say, uh, just before you do that line, you're glancing to the left. Don't glance to the left. Keep your eye on him before you do the line and take a slightly longer pause. And then they'll run it again and uh, he or she will do that. And the whole audience, you know, all the other people in the us to watching suddenly laugh and it, it, it's wonderful the speed with which they picked up on this stuff that was John Cleese speaking to me a couple of months ago here in, in Perth. Stephen Hall joins us in, in the studio and I know you are a very accomplished actor Stephen Hall but wow wow I haven't heard him say that before. That's, Have you not? No, no, that's lovely. That's um, it's just I got goosebumps just then. Oh, good. Mm, thanks What's for playing that. You've made my day. Excellent. <laughs> well, you. I, I mean, I have to say, you look the part. You are indeed very tall. Yes. And um, you look. I've do, well, thanks to the hair dye. In real life, I'm a ranger. Um, but uh, yes, the, the the hair and the eyebrows and the moustache have all been dyed. Yes. Yeah, you look uh, you and look uncannily like Basil Fawlty, so that doesn't hurt. But as John Cleese pointed out, you also have to be a very good actor. Now, how did all of this come about? Well, it was I, I heard about it just through my agent. They said there's a auditions. They've they're adapting um, Fawlty Towers into a, into a play, and John Cleese is doing it doing the writing himself. And um, we thought you, we'd put you up for this. You'd be perfect for it. And I said. Yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. And uh, so I auditioned for it down in Melbourne uh, back in February and um, then did a second audition the next day. They called what, me what back. What did you have to do for the audition? Oh, they, because the script hadn't been released yet, there were just various show, uh, scenes from the TV show, including uh, taking the orders of the Germans and um, visiting Sybil in hospital when she's about to get her ingrown toenail out. Uh, and there were about four or five scenes that we had to learn for that audition. And so they got me back the next day with a different Sybil and then I got through to the third audition which was a marathon effort up in Sydney which went from 10 in the morning to 6 at night and, we, and I had another four or five scenes to learn for that as well where the last few remaining Basil's, Sybil's, Polly's, uh, the, the Majors and Mrs Richards's and Mr Hutchison's all um, were mixed and matched uh, over this long marathon audition and um, he was there for that one. He wasn't there for the first two. Oh. But uh, when uh, I started doing my thing and heard him laugh, what a sweet sound that was. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So um, what did he say to you? What sort of um, – do you remember the first time you met him? Um, uh, no, he was, he was just saying, well – well, the one thing that he did say to all of us assembled hopefuls on the morning of the um, Saturday was, uh, and the main thing you have to remember is just be very, very nervous and <laughs> intimidated and get things wrong. So thanks for the pep talk, John. Um, but, uh, no, he, he was just laughing and he said to Blazy and I, who auditioned for Sybil and ended up getting it too, um, we were doing our stuff in front of him and he was laughing and he was saying, thank you for making me realise how funny this writing still is. And then John's daughter was sitting next to him and she said, well, you would say that, you wrote it. Um, so it was nice having uh, her there as well, but there was a big trestle table as there always is at auditions and there were the producers and the resident director, but, uh, yeah, John John was there throughout the day, yeah. So did you watch Faulty Towers as a child? Yes, Yes, I was a big fan and I came through it, came to it by way of Monty Python. I was a big Python nerd and uh, so when Faulty Towers first came on the ABC, was that early 80s, I guess? Yeah. Um, I do remember falling off my couch laughing at various points in the in the show and just watching it just avidly. Yeah, loved it. What was your favourite bit? Well, uh, f for me... Um, I, st I still love the line with Mrs Richards, who's a horrible, horrible lady with hard of hearing, and he plays a joke on her by just mouthing words. And she <laughs> she bumps her head and he says, he yells at her, is this a piece of your brain? I, I still love that. And also in the fire drill episode where he... He mistakenly believes it's only a drill and he shoves Manuel back in the burning kitchen and locks the door. <laughs> Just such absurd cruelty. I love it. 
<laughs> We're speaking on 720 ABC Perth and WA to Stephen Hall. He plays Basil Fawlty in the stage show Fawlty Towers Live. It starts at the Regal Theatre on uh, Friday and you, you must see it. So I loved the, um, I still love, I still watch the car scene where he... Mm. I'm going to give you a damn good thrashing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I warned you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right, that's it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. I think that I that uh, street, particular street corner in England now has had little um, sort of traf- uh, bollards put up so that people can't reenact that scene for photos and things. Oh, they they erected. Damn it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they, they, they're one step ahead because otherwise it's as iconic as Abbey Road, crossing Abbey Road, posing for that photo to get a red car there and thrash it with a branch. <laughs> So what, um, I mean, what what else, John Cleese, we heard him there uh, talking just in general about those tiny little mm. nuances and I imagine the voice is very important and you clearly have the look and all of that, those tiny little nuances. What else did he teach you about that before the, the show or was he very sort of, you know, do what you need to do? He was, it was great. He came, he came along very... Um we were, we were quite well advanced, and C.J. Ranger, who's our English director, who also um, helped uh, a little bit with the script, uh, had been drilling it and drilling it and drilling it. And by the time he got there, we uh, we'd been working really hard because, as you can imagine, it's very there's a lot to remember, and it's very uh, meticulously choreographed with the farcical comings and goings and misunderstandings and head trauma. Um, and by the time we got there, we put on the show for him and he laughed and he said, that's fantastic. It's much more advanced than I thought it would be. And uh, morale just went through the roof. It was fantastic. So, But he said, yes, as he said, they, they were minor things. But every time he made a suggestion or a, uh, a, a tip or a hint, it did improve it immeasurably and it was like a comedy masterclass every day you know it was fantastic just every suggestion he made you know ah yeah of course that's why you're John Cleese yeah I just honestly um I just don't know how you stand in front of that man and get a comedy masterclass and you don't just burst into tears and try and stroke his hair or something (laughs) (laughs) well one thing that I've been doing Gillian is is trying not to look at the big picture this is a (laughs) This is a this is a, a real mental self talk thing that I do because I just focus on the task at hand because if I step back and look at it in its entirety, it will blow my tiny mind. And I plan to do that in March when it all finishes up, and I'll just take a step back and and just say what just happened, what have I just done, and then I'll cry. You'll be like Basil, you know those moments when when he just completely. <laughs> Stephen is doing the great Yes, yeah, good for radio, crowd. good visual gags for Waiting radio. His yes. fist mm. is in fury. He's very clenched, you know. Yes, he is very... Can you do Don't Mention the War? Can, <clears> you, can you... Yep. I can, and we do. And talking before about the... Um, the legs and the, um, the 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 silly walk. I'll do, all right, I'll do the funny hang walk. On, you, hang on, hang on. I've got to I've got to get this on. Uh, do don't mention the war, and then we can do the silly walk. What do you want me to say? Don't mention the war. Yes, I want you to get. Well, you can say whatever you're comfortable with. I don't want to. I don't want to lead you. But no. I, I, I just, you know, go on. Well, well, no, you can't. Well, you can't just do it. It's a little bit. Well, it's a little bit out of context. It doesn't sort of look the same. But um, all right. Well, perhaps you could but, do. Oh, I can't do this funny walk for radio. Well, I can. Look at this. Look how high my legs are going right now. Let's go on a pack up over my head. No. You can. You can do the funny walk. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, we're just going to. No, I'm not. What I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do the funny walk. I can say. Don't mention the war. I mentioned it once, but I think I got away with it all right. It's that kind of thing. There but you go. There I'm you sorry. Go. I know that's ex- that's excruciating and torturous, but we're all very excited. <laughs> all right. <laughs> One thing I did do, which I'd never done before, was heaps of yoga and stretching because, you know, you can't go into these sorts of things lightly and my hamstrings would never have forgiven me. So are you good? Can you get... Because I asked John about that and yep. he said you were very... He said, that's the easy part. And that, thought, he's yeah, wrong yeah. in saying that's the easy part. <laughs> that's not the easy part. That has not been easy. But, um, yeah, heaps and heaps of stretching and... Yeah, I can get... The foot, sort of up to eye level, and um, go on, sort of. go on. Oh, I haven't done my stretches. I can oh, give haven't it, you? I give haven't. it a give it I a crack. Give it a go. You this don't is... have to. It doesn't matter if you like. You know, you have to take your headphones off. Okay, sure. All right. This is Stephen Hall being Basil Fawlty. Hmm, for um, the radio. Yeah, for the radio. Yes, and he's just about to do that. Oh, that is very good. <laughs> oh my goodness. I haven't. <laughs> There you go. Reverend listening. That went right over your head. Yes, Reverend listening at home, my foot went up over my head. And you are a tall man. This is true. Mighty. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Good. Well, all the, the yoga paid off. Yes. Yes. Uh, did you did you take a little video of that? I took a little video right of up. it, and your head does um, does go right over your right over your 
right. Well, we, we probably won't. You get the idea. You get the yes. idea. I'll put it but, up uh, on. Uh, I'll, I will tweet it for you, people, so you'll be able to go and, and check out <laughs> Stephen Hall's photo <laughs> over his head. Well, you gave yourself. You were so self-deprecating. I expected you to just sort of go. Look, if I try it, that's all. Oh, that, that was only up to three barely, o'clock. You got to get it up to midnight. Get it up to yes. my knees. <laughs> now, tell us about the the actual show and what people can expect. Sure. It's um, written, as we say, by John, and he has melded three and a bit episodes into one two-act play that stands on its own um, as a very funny night at the theatre. And so you you get a sort of a conflation of various characters showing up in episodes that they weren't in originally, and ve- but various events and various... Um, uh, the routines and things. So the three episodes, um, and I'm not speaking out of school here, it's the hotel inspector with Mr Hutchison, who um, he thinks is a hotel inspector, um, and it's the Germans. Clearly, uh, because you've been practising. Oh, that's right, of course, yes. yeah. Spoiler alert. And uh, and uh, Mrs Richards, who is the hard of hearing. And there's a little smidgen of Basil the Rat in there as well. Oh, I love Basil the Rat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you have... And the, the great thing, it has this fantastic set design where you see downstairs you see the dining room, the lobby and the front counter and office and upstairs there's a, an app, Mrs Richards's hotel room. Uh, so you get to see, and it's been directed in this brilliant way where there's stuff going on in the dining room and you sort of get the benefit of what you didn't get in the TV show where you see what's happening elsewhere at other times simultaneously. Uh, I, so um, it's really, really great and it is set in Torquay in 1975 and it's just like when you go into the theatre and you see the set there it's like stepping into the TV show it's fantastic. Oh it's so so ripper and yeah. look you'll be absolutely un- you can you can do the walk you can do the voice you'll be fabulous <laughs> what a, Thank what you. A, and again I know you're a very accomplished actor so uh, but what no, an amazing experience this no, is. This is not just a career highlight this is actually a life highlight and it really 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 is and as I say, I'm going to look back on it in March, not before then, because there was one, at interval one night, I was pacing up and down in the the, the loading bay in the theatre up in Sydney and I was doing the walk because I'd practice, you know, I had to just get limber and stuff. And uh, I started to admit into my mind the, um, the the significance of this and I thought, oh, no, 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 I'm getting freaked out now. I'm getting freaked out. Forget about it. Just Just do act two. Get out there and do act two. Concentrate on the task at hand. Remember your words. Don't bump into the furniture. So, yeah. It's um, it is it is a it is a big deal, but um, one goose step at a time. Oh well, you know the man himself loves you, so that's yeah. um, that that is that's great. Thank you so much. Pleasure for coming. Pleasure. In.